So thank you for thank you for coming out um, on a very cold, miserable Saturday morning. Um, I'm always amazed to go Saturday our mornings. Um, but uh, yeah, thank, thank you thank you for coming along. We, we have hope really hope this is going to be a going to be a lovely weekend for everyone. Um, uh, as Tim said, this has been we're we're pretty much exactly four years in to uh, four years a week into selling raspberry pies. We're uh, very nearly five years into talking publicly about raspberry pies. So May this year will be five years since our uh, since our faithful encounter with Gloria at the BBC. Um, it's all going rather well. I think um, it's been a, it's been a, a we've come a bit of a wild ride. Um, I thought today what I might do is um, talk a little bit. I mean, you all know the story of raspberry pies. So I'm going to delay the how we got here. Um, these 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 talks the birthday party. Uh, I might actually refer to it as our annual, the second annual birthday party. If I call it the second annual birthday party, that could be a bit of a So these talks, yeah, the Rocky Park annual birthday party, um, are, are great for me because they're an opportunity for me to basically go back and read the whole of the blog in a few days for the, for the uh, preceding year um, and kind of see all the things that we've done. It's, it's strange how um, little it feels we're doing today by day. You know, how slow everything feels and how little it feels to do. And then when you take 365 or 366 days of it and you stack them up together, um, how far we've come to the video. So I, I have, a, um, uh, I have a, a deck with just kind of a few pictures that I've, that I've culled from the, the blog over the past year. But I hope we'll tell a bit of the story of what the last plans are in 2015 and the first part of 2016. So, first up, um, we made some products. So we got some products into the market. Raspberry Pi um, uh, engineering team is still quite a small organization. We still have only about 10 people doing product development. Um, but we did manage to get a few things into the market. The first one which was this thing. Those of you who weren't here last year will recognize this because we gave you all a free prototype of this. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi official case. Um, when we started doing Raspberry Pi, we always thought we were going to have to make a case. We always thought we were going to have to put Raspberry Pi in a pretty box um, in order for children to find it interesting. And one of the big discoveries, uh, one of the wonderful big early discoveries of the Raspberry Pi was actually um, a lot of young people find the fact it isn't the case kind of exciting. You know, like that you don't generally see the PCB, you don't see the green stuff unless you drop it on phone before. It's very, very interesting to see the PCB cards of the product. Um, so we put those in the box for a long time. Um, but it became apparent that a lot of people are using Raspberry Pi as a piece of uh, as a piece of consumer, as a piece of consumer electronics. Uh, so we thought we wanted a case. Um, we thought how hard could it be? Because we have people at Raspberry Pi who sit down and design chips and design uh, you know, high-tech PCBs, how hard would it possibly be to make a plastic box? Uh, the answer is actually incredibly hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is the single, well, I'm going to show the display later, which I think possibly just pips this for the record price to line by my product. Uh, this took us over two years to get from the idea of wanting the box to having the box. Um, uh, we went through two different injection molding companies, we spent about 100,000 pounds in the mold, uh, and we finally got this into the market in May, people like it, which is, which is kind of fun. And we have a new version for that, so it's just come out for us, we went through. Um, and we finally knuckled under and made it in a colour that isn't pink, as it turns out some people don't like pink. That's fun. And, and, a, and a wonderful tutorial for us in the fact that just because we are pretty good at some things, we can simultaneously be really, really terrible. <laughs> um, to go, uh, many of you know um, that we uh, put a little bit. We managed to put a Raspberry Pi, two Raspberry Pis, on the International Space Station this year. Um, as part of that project, we needed a peripheral board for the Pi that school children could use to uh, um, produce a bit of their experiments. So because we had a good deal on uh, RGB LEDs, we thought we'd got 64 of them on there as well. I think it's a, uh, a um, uh, supply chain driven engineering decision, <laughs> um, which has been for us now because we've now run out of the cheap LEDs. The, uh, the cheap LEDs we use will have spent six months, James Adams has spent six months running around trying to find other LEDs which are anywhere near as cheap and anyway, which was good. Um, but yeah, we got this into the market in August, uh, it's been pretty popular. Obviously, we distributed quite a few of these through the schools earlier in the year. Uh, the display, yeah, this probably does pit the case as that, as that most delayed product. Uh, it's gone down to be well, that's another thing that you can buy out of the uh, People will be using the library. That's already fine. It's going into a lot of interesting projects. Not least because it turns out to be just the right size to mount on the dashboard of the car. A couple of 
two units from the second box that you can't have those in the third box. So you can have your own kind of discount Tesla experience. Do <laughs> 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 it um, So well, we've been making products um, uh, on the engineering side, um, but we've also had the opportunity to do some cool stuff with our partners. Um, uh, the foundation side of the opportunity to do some cool stuff with our partners, in this case Oracle, um, in putting out kits. Uh, so the weather station kit, which we've been distributing, um, uh, which we've uh, been distributing over the last year, has been, uh, has been kind of fun. Not least for me because it gave me, uh, gave me an opportunity to work with Sam Holden. Uh, many of you know uh, Sam, uh, uh, our graphic, uh, graphic artist. Gave me an opportunity to work with him on doing things like this, which is the most. I, I was a Lego kid, mm -hmm. and I love this kind of like put this together. It's a uh, 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 tab to swap these kind of things. An enormous amount of debate went into exactly where those screws. <laughs> um, uh, so we've been doing cool stuff. Obviously, the very, the very, the vast, vast, vast majority of cool stuff. There ain't really a vast majority sold. Uh, the vast, vast majority of cool stuff that happens with Raspberry Pi isn't done by us at all. It's done by, uh, uh, it's done by other people. So uh, more good Raspberry Pi stuff this year. This is the Nature Bytes. So this is the Nature Bytes Kickstarter, um, and it's out of London. Uh, and they, they, they've had some, they've had some good success this year with their. Funky green box. I think also feeling some of the uh, uh, feeling some of the injection of the pack. Um, uh, this one I love. This is a, uh, an old friend of mine in Texas. Um, his son. I don't know if you recall earlier this year, uh, a child in Texas had a little bit of trouble um, with taking a device into uh, school that had uh, a clock on it. Um, a, a good friend of mine uh, lives in Austin. A guy I used to work for. And his son built this with a Raspberry Pi and did take it into school, but he did have a good sense of his fun teacher. <laughs> uh, beautiful Dixie clock, and obviously in the box because there's 250 volts in there. Um, and this is another one, this was, this was on the one very, very recently, book scanner using Raspberry Pi. So this is just kind of this is enormous broad range, we're still benefiting from this enormous broad range of cool stuff that people try and do. Um, software things, um, uh, as many of you know, towards the end of 2014, we grew our software team very, very rapidly. So we got from the point where we had one or two software engineers to a point where we have eight or nine software engineers and another four or five contractors. This will let us do some cool stuff this year. Uh, this lady is Jesse, as any Toy Story fan will know. Um, and um, partway through the year, we've got to modernize so we've got a lot of support from Pete. Green, where are you? Are you Pete, are you in the room? You're not. Okay, so a little bit more than help from Pete Green, obviously, he's Mr. Rathbin, and I know he's wandering around this weekend. Um, we were able to move our operating system up and use from Jesse and get lots more modern packages. And then alongside that, pull in lots of user interface improvements. So Raspberry Pi is now starting to feel, along with the hardware performance improvements we've seen, the software usability improvements are starting to make it feel a lot more like being a, a lot more like being real. We can see Jesse uh, doesn't follow that. Um, another thing that's uh, bumbling under, um, in January of this year, we released uh, an, interesting, an engineering beta of our open graphics drivers. One of the big criticisms that people have of our based on the platforms is that they are closed, some kind of closed, but they have um, elements of the architecture which are um, not documented or are um, hard to get out, hard to understand, or hard to control the some code which you don't have to um, so That's the case with Rotten Pi. Uh, it's the case with every other one. One wonderful thing that we've got is uh, we do now in Raspberry Pi have the only public document um, through the graphics in, in, in the arm world. Uh, Eric Gamholt, uh, who works with him in Canada, Oregon, uh, has spent the last couple of years uh, putting together a really nice and such graphics file for the Pi. This, this doesn't eliminate, but it radically shrinks the fraction of the Raspberry Pi hardware which is opaque, and of course that's incredibly important, given that the high level is the approach we need to understand what's going on inside that computer. And this is, uh, this is, yeah, this is Monty Ball Climb running one of the, one of the, nice, the other nice things, in addition to open doors, the other nice thing that we've given us, that Eric's work has given us, is much, much better integration between our multimedia implementation and our best ones, so we can now run applications like this with our um, Last one, uh, we've had some fantastic interactions this year with Microsoft. Um, a year ago, uh, we announced that uh, there was going to be the first support for Raspberry Pi. We've got the first uh, applications. Uh, we've just sent out two applications and run them on Pi. Um, we've been working with Microsoft really hard. Microsoft outside of the home. We'll get their demos later. 
has some great interactions with them, you know, not least around this guy who's called the name of the script, I was going to say BB10, but that's something else. <laughs> uh, I wish I'd made it. No, anyway, this, this, so, so this, is a, this is a nice a nice demonstration of a, a little buggy driving around with, uh, with the Raspberry Pi and running Windows, and then this other one is Hot Notes. Uh, I don't know whether they uh, demoed it uh, last year. Um, any, anyone? You all know that. We have a Raspberry Pi in space, we have two Raspberry Pi in space. Um, a, a big effort, particularly for Dave Ellis and John Bell, to, um, has been around getting um, uh, getting the Raspberry Pi ready for flight. Um, this has been probably one part of engineering right past paperwork. Uh, they say you know, when the paperwork weighs more than the payload. Uh, and although we're a pretty light payload, they, they, they certainly did get that. Um, lots of trips back. Um, so as part of that, we designed a beautiful case that takes a Raspberry Pi on top and you can see the uh, uh, same thing. Um, we managed to get Tim Peake to wear all of our t-shirts. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is British, British Lisa astronaut Tim Peake. Uh, the, uh, we're not allowed to refer to him as Major Tim. Uh, we all refer to him as Major Tim. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, we managed to get Tim to hold our product and wear our t-shirt, which is lovely. Um, uh, we stuck in on one of these. Um, Jonathan and uh, Dave travelled out to Florida. Uh, absolutely heartbreaking. We gave them uh, about four or five days there to, 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 to accommodate um, uh, launch slips and they slipped and slipped and slipped and slipped. And then on the very, very last day, um, it looked like it was going to be good. They went down to the Cape and there was a water leak at the visitor centre. The, they were not allowed to get close because they're not American citizens. Um, but they were allowed, they were intending to watch from the visitor centre, which is very close. There was a water leak of the uh, visitor centre, they closed the visitor centre, and they ended up watching this go up uh, from a lay by off the freeway out of the forest. <laughs> and then literally, they got 10 seconds, went through the power deck, getting the car put over down, driving to the headboard. So they did, they did technically get to see this go up. And, uh, it was, it was a touch and go. Um, so it went up, and then the panel. Tim actually unpacked the Raspberry Pi earlier than we were expecting. It's starting to be spun together. It's not the good news. And over the last couple of weeks, we've started to run some of the code that kids have been writing uh, to uh, kids being writing to the government. Um, and that's, that's one of why we've lost it because of my code. It's not to do. Two things I liked when I was a kid. I was a space cadet. And, uh, I was a space cadet. And that's just, that's a wonderful thing. Um, oh, this guy. This guy. Another thing that happened this year, so we, we, we found ourselves a new. This is his official, this is the picture he sent us looking at Bucky Jock. This is really nice. Um, uh, um, but I was able to find this one, which I think ca captures the, 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 the essential buttly, the essential buttly that's like This is what he was like. But no, um, so, so, in, um, I, so I accused him of having been here a year because he hadn't been here a year at all. Uh, but in uh, July, yeah. yeah, July. So July 2015, uh, Philip Jones is the chief executive of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, he'll be talking in uh, a little while and uh, give you a kind of idea of what, you know, more detailed idea of what the foundation's been up to since. But this has really represented a kind of really a step change in our ability. It's sort of start a step change in our ability to uh, to really, really deliver on the information mission. You know, it's an enormous, there's an enormous opportunity here. Uh, as many of you know, we were motivated. Um, to, to do Raspberry Pi by this collapse in the number of people applying to the university came. That number has recovered, right? That number has got back. So we start, we have 600 people applying to study computer science in 1999 2000. We had 250 by 2008. We have nearly 800 last year. So we've seen this rebound. And that isn't just us, that's this very, very broad coalition of people who are trying to solve this problem. Uh, but we, The, um, so I mean, and this is fantastic. And so, so to some extent, our original ambition that, was, that, that we had when we started, which is to get the, which get the, get the 1980s back, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not a Duran Duran reference, um, but um, yeah, to get the 1980s back um, has, um, uh, as uh, I, mean, I think we're there, right? I mean, I think if you look around this weekend, we're there. Right? Um, I think the opportunity, though, as we've done that. 
we've realized that the opportunity is not great. We do. If you look more critically at the 1990s, if you look more critically at what participation in computing uh, and digital making looked like in the 1990s, it was an incredibly democratic and narrow uh, space. It was uh, concentrated on small countries, it was concentrated on a small number of children. In the 1980s, I, I, I went to a, um, my school, the school system I was in was a three uh, it was a three-tier school system, so it had uh, primary schools, it had three middle schools across three towns, and then one secondary school. And I remember there was somebody else, you know, Uncle Tom Adams, um, another boy in my year, uh, who was into computing. Uh, and I remember thinking as we were merging up into the secondary school, this is going to be great, they're probably going to be six, you know, I can do statistics, they're probably going to be six people. There were two people. Yeah, it was just two of us that we came up. And this was in the year of 200 people. There were two people who had a really interesting computing. And this was pretty much as good as and we were both boys uh, from very similar backgrounds. And we both took it. Um, there's a wonderful opportunity to go much, much, to go far beyond that, to get a much broader level of participation. Uh, and one of the wonderful things that we've seen over the last year is really the foundation really started to kind of tune into this enormous opportunity that we have to make, to make it like the 1980s, but times 10, times um, So, one of the first things that Philip did was he made us a new friends. Um, in November, we merged, the foundation merged with Code Club, which is, as I said, there's a very broad coalition of people pushing forward here. Uh, we, merged, we, we, we merged with Code Club. Um, the, I'm going to try and do this if you're not Unless you want to say that. Yeah. So it's uh, a network of 6,000. Over 6,000 left for school clubs and nine hundred and ninety Uh Enormously successful. Actually, probably the same age as well. Really kicked off in 2012 at about the same time. Uh, Forty percent of the participants uh, in Code Club are girls. Um, you know, so very, very kind of very different, I think, from the sort of old image, the bad old image of who's interested in the Very, very balanced. That's wonderful. Um, as part of this, we acquired what's 20, 25, 25 new people. Uh, really try to suck now, Claire, I, in, in trying to find pictures of so Claire and the Code Club. Um, uh, also, in a lot of my secondary school, which is kind of funny. Um, uh, and in trying to find pictures of Clara, I've discovered that she's in Instagram's uh, biggest customer. It's impossible to find a picture of Clara, which has not had 100 different Instagram followers. Uh, and she's actually now joined us as a director of Clara and Clara. Uh, and, uh, you know, if anything, since, since the merger, it's, it's, uh, the, the numbers just keep ticking out, both in the UK and now, so, so that's what we're doing. Um, we got to go do some stuff. Um, uh, so we've got uh, uh, Matt at the back there, um, uh, and um, it's Corey who uh, uh, works for us in the US. Uh, we got to go and do some good stuff. Uh, this was a photo from the uh, Fair Bay Area, a uh, lovely crew there. Uh, we got a, a Best in Class award, which was nice, possibly for beers. <laughs> uh, almost everybody in there who's capable of sporting beers is a little and this is what, what's lovely. The US is our the US is our largest uh, the US is our largest market. So we're only by trading, the US is now by far our largest market. It's two or three times the size of the number of us we've so, uh, this year we've really started to engage on the education side. Obviously we have Matt uh, is Courtney in the room. Hello. Um, Courtney joined us uh, six weeks ago. Uh, so we now have two uh, we now have two boys in, in the US based uh, based in the Bay Area. Uh, uh, we ran our first uh, Pi Academy uh, teacher training program uh, last weekend um, in, uh, in, in the Bay Area. So we're starting to kind of scale what's happening in the US. There's a, just as there's a wonderful opportunity to do cool stuff here, there's a wonderful opportunity to do cool stuff in the US. And we're starting to scale a bit more in these things. To some extent, I mean, those are all, so I talked about new products earlier. Uh, to some extent, this has been the year of Mac time. Right. As many of you know, since very early on, since 2012, there was a wonderful fan uh, produced uh, magazine, the Magpie. Uh, the team, the Magpie team, produced 30, is 30 monthly issues of the Magpie, which I have just no idea how they managed to have the energy uh, to do this. Um, at the start of uh, 2015, um, we did bring the Magpie in house uh, into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we joined by Russell. Uh, uh, a few, few unbearded. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Russell joined us uh, at the start of 2015 and was then joined by uh, Bob Sosky at the end of the year. Um, uh, we had a, a brief hiatus, we had a brief uh, 
uh, digital army hiatus, the Mac Market print magazine was a brief digital army hiatus uh, at the start of the year. Um, 70, do you remember the Mac Post? 70 pages, you only have to do 70 pages. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a brief, a brief hiatus uh, and then went back into print in the middle of the year. You can go into your Tesco's and your Astro and your WS units. Um, here you can go into your microcentral accounts and your WS units. And we certainly never imagined that we were going to be a publishing company when we started. Uh, but really, thanks to Liz's determination that this was a good thing to do. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's let us do some great things. Um, we're not just publishing magazines, we're publishing books. So these, are, these four are available. There are, what's the deal? There are copies around today. Yeah, you can, you can buy them from the pie. So you can buy, we have copies of this that you can buy uh, from the pie um, store today. Um, and what these do, these, these aggregate, uh, these books tend to aggregate content from when we run a series in Magpie, often what we'll do is we take that series, we'll package it as a book, we'll have some new content. Um, and uh, these are the first four of what we hope to be a line of what might make the 10, uh, uh, 10 Essentials books. Uh, we have the project book. Um, yeah, so it's kind of fun. Um, having your own magazine lets you do interesting things. Um, you remember this, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, Pete actually brought a, brought a prop in for me, uh, diff a different meaning of Raspberry Pi Zero. This really was Raspberry Pi Zero. So this is Raspberry. This was the very first Raspberry Pi Model B off the line. So there's one off there, yeah. and this is the first Raspberry Pi off the line at uh, Pete's uh, facility in Cheshire, um, back in the December, just before Christmas, so it was 2011. So that was the original Raspberry Pi Zero, and that's in staggering depression. So I'm going to give it back to Pete now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so in November we were able to do this. Um, we've yeah, before Raspberry Pi was Raspberry Pi, um, little computers, little single board computers for hacking on cost about 100, 125 dollars. So we took that factor of four. Um, I think when we did it, we never imagined we'd be able to do it again. The Raspberry Pi Zero launched in November, extremely popular, still struggling to make enough of these. Um, you know, they, we can make them and they sell out, and make more and they sell out. So they fight for factory space with Raspberry Pi three. Uh, in Wales, um, but we're, we're getting there. This was incredibly popular. One of the lovely things we could do because we have the Magpie was we could stick on Magpie. And so we, 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 this year, if, if and there was one cool thing that happened from my point of view in 2015, we became the first computer magazine to give away a computer. Um, as, as, as a um, we put out in the end, I think, including what went into stores and what went into, went to, to the subscribers, about 20,000 copies. Uh, it's, it's 20, Trouble that I had for the hardware in my life as a child. I don't know if it's deprived, but you know, computer hardware was, was expensive. The computer hardware remains expensive. And there's always that fear we have that um, the, cost of, um, the cost of computers could become a, could, could be a for people. Even at the 20, the 20 to 35 dollar price point, you know, the class of cost of hardware is really bad to be better than that. Um, I'll be able to do this as well. So yeah, this, this is... Um, uh, we launched Raspberry Pi on the 29th of February, uh, 2012. Um, um, it turned out to be a great guy, because it's meant that we launched this on our first birthday. Um, Raspberry Pi 3, um, usually what happens, uh, in, this has been on sale for so five days now, Usually what happens in the first week or so of the product launch office is the bugs go out the uh, People find what's wrong with the product. And what's been amazing to us this week with Raspberry Pi uh, 3 has been what's called out of the woodwork is the realization that when we said it was 50% faster, we were wrong and it was twice as fast. Um, the benchmarks are 50% faster. What's interesting about the Cortex A53 in Raspberry Pi 3 is that ARM have been developing that. Differentially, they prioritize differentially making actual application performance faster rather than just actual performance. So, where the numbers that we were talking about look like 20 to 30 percent improvement uh, in benchmark performance at a given clock, and then 33 percent clock speed increase, so about 50 percent performance improvement. What 
he is actually substantiated by people's experience on the device and by some of the material that come from there, is that you actually see very real application, more like 50% increase in the price of the bottom, and then 33% of the bottom, and then 33% of the bottom, and then 33% of the bottom. As we've been distributing these over the last month or two uh, to, to beta testers, we were getting this response in fact saying, it doesn't feel like it's 50% faster. Um, so this is one of the things that's come out of from the kind of broad benchmarking that happens when you put a couple of thousand years in the field. So it's been a fantastic year for us. Um, yeah, I think that you know, 2015 was amazing. 2016, I think it's going to be even, even better, both on the engineering side and on the foundation on the parameters side. Um, I should say thanks, a, little, a, few, a few thank yous to say. Um, obviously, thanks to Michael Ken for putting this together. Uh, thanks to Emily um, uh, for, uh, for, for helping. Also, have Helen Drury uh, for the first time we have. Uh, an event organizer within Raspberry Pi who's able to provide, you know, so we, we can we can chip in as well. And I can chip as well, and also uh, we can chip in as well. So it's been a really, uh, it's been good fun for me as well. Um, <laughs> and I, and I, I, I said it last year, and I'll say it again this year. Um, Raspberry Pi is not a computer company. Uh, it's, it's a community, we may look a lot like a computer company, we may sell a but we're a community. Uh, everything that Rodney Farm does is critically and of modest modest. We couldn't do anything with that. So I think at the end will be fantastic to be a So we're, we're, we're completely happy with those. Um, so I think we'll, 